So in this video today, we're gonna to be going over the swatch selector settings and how we can leverage those. So the default is obviously class. That is really simple and we use that a lot throughout all of the tutorials videos here, right? And it's simple. If you just type in a class here, all you need to do is paste that or type in that corresponding class inside of a stack and that swatch gets applied. Super simple. However, there are some other more advanced things that we can do with swatches. If you notice inside this mode, we have a couple other options here. The next component from class is component. And inside components, you'll notice that we've actually created a dropdown of tons of pre-made components. Basically, every single component within Foundation 6 is here. So if you want to style a menu, or if you want to style a button, or if you want to style table or table headers, right? Um, we allow you to really easily target all of those components. So if you wanted to target all buttons on a page, just simply type button, right? Or choose the button component. Or if you wanted to uh, style all table headers, right? Or table rows or even rows or odd rows. So as you see, there are a ton of uh, options here within components uh, to really hone in and target a specific Foundation 6 component. Now, if you wanted to limit this, for example, let's take a block quote, for example. If we wanted to limit a block quote to a particular section, we can do that as well. And that's where this parent class comes in. So I've added a block quote here. And let's say um, inside, I wanted to style this block quote and we wanted to do, um, a orange background. Okay. That looks horrible, but bear with me. Let's say I wanted to target this quote, but not this quote. Okay. Um, what I could do is I'm going to put a parent class of, um, I don't know, I'm going to call this quote section for lack of imagination. Okay. So um, right now, what this is going to say is when I have something called quote section and all block quotes inside quote section, are going to be have an orange background. So now if I add a, a class to this two column, right? If I do um, quote dash section here, what you'll notice is uh, this quote, since it's inside of a quote section, um, it is getting that style. But since this quote is not, it's not getting this style. But what you'll notice is if I immediately drag this in there, it then gets that particular style, right? So that's how we can use these components and use the parent class along with them to really hone down and target and you know precisely um, qualify what our styles is, select our style. Now the next mode in here is called CSS selector. And this is for the real cowboys out there because this um, is an actual CSS selector. So this, you have to actually know um, your CSS selector. Um, I have videos uh, on how to find that out if you're familiar with the Dev Inspector, but if you are a cowboy, you can go ahead and type in your own CSS selector in here, and these styles will be applied to, to that. Now, below the modes, you'll notice that there is an on state, and this has a lot of use cases here, um, but the primary use case is gonna be here for hover elements. Uh, make sure you check out our tutorial on how to use hover states um, and apply specific styles on hover. Um, we're not going to go that uh, into that in this particular video, but uh, we do have a video on hover. And uh, but there are a lot of other styles um, in here, such as if you wanted to um, maybe style every other thing or style a the first element of something. Right? These are kind of more advanced uh, use cases. Um, you know, if you want to target all required form fields or something like that, you can do that. Um, so these are kind of very edge case uh, scenarios. Hover is going to be the biggest use case here. Now, next thing here is we'll have breakpoint. And this is for if you want to apply particular styles to a specific breakpoint, right? So maybe in background, this doesn't make much sense. But um, if we were to do padding or text size or something, you know, maybe you only wanted to apply that particular style, you know, margins and padding are probably a big one where you only wanted to apply that style to a particular device, 
right? So only small devices, or you wanted to apply this style to only small and medium devices, right? Or large only. Um, so this is really powerful. It allows you to really customize where those um, styles are being applied. Now you might notice that inside the font swatches, we do have a few other um, options available as on top of the ones we just discussed. And these are the give you the ability to have page wide elements, right? So if you want to apply styles to all paragraph elements or all H1 or H2 tags, um, we have some convenient buttons here um, specific to uh, fonts that uh, we felt were easier to add these directly to uh, font styles, right? Now, if you wanted to apply these, um, we'll give you maybe a little, a little tip here. Let's say we wanted to um, use some of those styles inside the uh, um, normal swatches. So let's say I wanted to apply um, this to um, all paragraph tags. I could just simply put a P in here in the custom selector. And guess what? This um, swatch will now be applied to all paragraph elements. If we wanted to apply all H3 elements, Inside the custom sub selector, just put H3. Now you can do more. So if I do comma H4, comma H5, I can do multiple. If you notice, it actually applied those styles to some of these because I believe these are H4s uh, right here in edit mode. So it, you know, you can apply styles, um, you know, to all of a particular type of element using this custom selector just by typing in the elements here. So there's a little bit of custom CSS for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go out and make something great.